Hey everyone, Max at the microphone again and about a week ago Valve published a new trademark to the United States Patent Office, which according to the description related to one of the company's future games. Also I gathered some exciting news related to the future CSGO updates and transition to Source 2, so let's get right into it. Those who've been following me for over a year probably already know that since last year Valve is consistently renewing new trademarks related to Counter-Strike. And many people, including me, are speculating that this is related to the transition of CSGO to Source 2 or an entirely new game in the franchise. Previous CSGO and Counter-Strike trademarks have been in existence for more than 10 years, and there is no need to create new feelings to just renew them. And stuff that happened about a week ago cannot be simply explained. As I already said, they've registered two new trademarks for a project called Neon Prime. Judging by the description, this project is a game in which multiplayer is a key component. Neon Prime falls exactly under the category of video games, not software like some sort of anti-cheats or hardware like the Steam Deck. And the description matches trademarks for the Dota Underlords and Artifact with a slight difference from the Half-Life Alex. So we can assume that this will be a session-based online game like the Dota 2 or CSGO. The only game that has been developed inside Valve and fits this description is a project codenamed Citadel, which has been leaking many times over the last few years. But in this case the name Neon Prime looks kind of out of place, since Citadel is being developed as a game in the Half-Life universe. Universe. It is important to note that Half-Life Alex's trademark and description appeared just a few days before its official announcement, so it's kinda possible that we'll know more details about Neon Prime in the nearest future, cause Valve likes to proudly announce this kind of projects at their own events. And maybe we'll see a real announcement at the CSGO Major, or at the Dota International as it was with Artifact, or at the Game Awards, since there was information on Reddit that Gabe Newell will personally personally attend one of those events. I've asked all possible people and sources and some of them agreed that Neon Prime could be a fantasy project designed by Ice Frog, the creator of Dota who is still working at Valve. But the game itself takes place in a whole new universe, not connected in any way with Dota or Half-Life. Aside from that, a former Valve developer responded to my embed tweet on Reset Era. According to him, Neon Prime could be related to an announced game that was being internally developed before he left. He says that the game looks similar to the ship building FTL faster than light in the roguelike genre with an in-depth space exploration. And it sounds especially interesting when you consider that Valve had a game about space pirates called Stars of Blood, and many of the official project concept arts are still preserved on the Valve Archive website. What is it actually all about, honestly, I don't know, and we'll probably learn in the nearest future. But users already began to generate some crazy theories, like that Neon is a chemical element and its Half-Life, like literal Half-Life, more or less equals 3. So Half-Life 3 confirmed and all that stuff. Tired of losing matches in CSGO, then you should try xplay.gg, a network of game servers for training your skills. Play on different game modes and win skins by completing challenges. Click the quick start button and earn X coins, which you can exchange for skins. Easy profit. Deathmatch, B-Hop, Retake and 12 other classic game modes including a new training format called BOTS. Play against AI of various difficulty levels from medium to cheaters, who shoot better than pro players. Bots actively move across the whole map, so you'll find them around any corner. X-Play game servers are located all around the world, so you'll have the lowest ping possible. Start training and earning skins by clicking the link down below. At the same time, one of the CSGO developers once again was spotted in the Source 2 branch on the public app ID 730. And in case you missed it, it's already happened a couple of weeks ago. 
The second exciting event which occurred a little later is the first appearance of Source 2 version on a public app ID 730. So basically in a version of the game that we all play. Previously we've seen this version only in a closed beta for the developers under app ID 710. And most likely they are just testing how the game coordinator reacts to another version in a public branch of the game. If it connects normally, if you can join some official servers and so on and so on. In theory this may confirm the rumors that the transition to the new engine won't happen immediately. And similar to Dota 2 Reborn, two versions of the game on the first and second source will be available at the same time. And since it's all tested that on one public app ID of CSGO, the version selector will appear immediately after a possible port. So now, despite the fact that the CSGO developers hit the closed beta dev version under app ID 7.10.0 and fixed the exploit that we used to spy on them, we still kinda have a way to monitor their activity. Also, two new hidden app IDs related to CSGO appeared two days ago. Normally, this kind of DLCs are related to operations, viewer passes or major stickers. And usually they're being attached to the public version of the game under app ID 730. But I think for the first time in history they were added to the closed beta dev version under app ID 710. So in theory this could be related to something much more interesting. And all of the sections look especially suspicious after developers started changing profile banner on their official Twitter account. Firstly it was just Counter Strike and then hidden message it's a banner nothing more promise appeared. Which is a reference to the odd blog post from the official website and the follow up tweet. And for the last time it's changed to a real major reference. The last time the FT's something through a profile banner was shortly before the announcement of the big update with Danger Zone and the transition to the free to play monetization model. Meanwhile FMPON creator of Cash and many other official edit maps continues to share his progress in developing a new CSGO map created exclusively within the Source 2 engine by using the Half-Life Alex toolset. He's doing it purely for learning purposes in order to compare how much easier and more user-friendly it'll be to make maps after the transition to the new engine. Especially considering the fact that all complex geometry, buildings and objects were created solely within the Source 2 hammer without using any third-party 3D software like Blender. Oliver H, Jim Wood and Dimensional Whom, creators of the officially added maps like Basalt, Iris, Mutini and Ember announced their new map called Brew. Action takes place at a well-known brewery where two illegal moonshiners seeking ways to expand their market share and planning to add their secret high test C4 ingredient to the mix. And only two agents from the special anti-drinking unit can stop them. The second map is called Orbit and being developed by Bars with the support of Morozov and Hell Map. Events unfold near a space station based on Mars, far into the future, where one of the spaceships was sabotaged by Phoenix Group in order to compromise a mission to colonize the planet. The map was originally created for a minigame based on Among Us, but later grew into an independent project. After the explosion on the planet, the map changes its gravity and pushes the player out of the game zone. The main goal was to create an extremely dynamic and fast paced map while giving the players a whole new experience. Both maps are being developed for the wingman mode and already available for download in the workshop. Also CSGO developers liked Slimex tweet with the opinion that it's more difficult for community maps to get into the tournament map. Pool. Roughly speaking, Valve is not very comfortable when someone outside of the company is working on the maps with such high priority. And the only possible option is to buy the rights and remove the original author from the development. This topic caused a big discussion and criticism like why even try to make community maps if they would never get to the official tournaments. It's kinda difficult to decide who's right and who's not because both sides have good arguments. After a short break, a third walk wave has begun. Previous two lasted from the beginning of July and according to several sources more than 160k accounts have already been blocked. It is quite possible that the developers are now slowly testing and activating new VACnet anti-cheat modules and will be seeing similar blocking spikes much more often. Make sure to check out my previous video where I talk about next gen graphics for CSGO on Source 2 and don't forget to support me by subscribing, liking and writing some comments. Until next time, увидимся!